I'm going to try a different way uh, for cognitive services session. So welcome everyone again for uh, the data Tobagan conference and thanks for giving me the opportunity to present uh, this session again. So here today I'm going to present around how to use cognitive services in Azure Synapse Analytics. So cognitive services, I think a lot of you have heard about. It's a set of APIs that Microsoft have provided which can help you to make any applications AI enabled. So that is as simple as a definition for cognitive services, but how do we make it to work and in conjunction with the Azure Synapse Analytics and why it is really important and that's what I want to drill down as part of this session. So we have a simple agenda here. I think I can uh, skip a few things because in the previous session, like I saw a quick intro around Synapse Analytics, so I won't touch uh, too much into that other than by now you would have known like how to create a Synapse Analytics workspace. If not, watch the previous video again and that will help you in detail. So we will be talking about modern data warehouse, like uh, what is the difference between uh, a traditional data warehouse versus modern data warehouse and why it is really uh, important for organizations to embrace modern data warehouses. Uh, quick intro, again, it will be really quick and why AI is important in modern data warehouses. So and how we can use cognitive services in conjunction with Azure Synapse Analytics. So we talk, when we talk about modern data warehouse, we'll touch where Synapse Analytics fits in. And finally, like we'll look at what is the, some of the prerequisites uh, that you have to configure for your uh, cognitive, to use cognitive services in Azure Synapse Analytics. And of course we have demos and quite a few references. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask me towards the end of the session. Okay, so let us get into the thing. So I'm going to start with a demo. So I'm um, no worries. Like if you don't know much about cognitive services or how do you use in Synapse Analytics, but I think once we see this demo, you get a feel around what it is and then we will drill into the session itself. So let me get my Synapse Analytics workspace here. Cool. So what I have got here is my Synapse Analytics workspace and I have got a notebook. So you can see I have got a series of notebooks in here. So what I'm going to uh, showcase in the first demo is computer vision. So computer vision is one of the uh, cognitive service which Microsoft provides as part of the cognitive services stack. So what it helps you is like uh, if you have an image, right? Sometimes like you may have uh, some information on the image like text on the image or it may be like um, uh, a person on the image that you want to identify. So previously, when we build search engines, we can scan through text. We can scan through uh, documents and stuff, but what we can't find is like uh, if you are searching for Anupama, you can see like what documents Anupama has written. So where Anupama comes in any of the documents, you can search that uh, either the metadata or the content. But what you can't do is if I have a series of images, you can find out where Anupama is uh, in that particular uh, image. So if I have thousand images, can uh, previously we weren't able to pick up like is Anupama there in one of the thousand images, but co with cognitive services computer vision, we will be able to do that. So it's all about like uh, how do you analyze uh, uh, objects within the image and that's what computer vision helps you to do. And we will talk in detail about what are the different types of cognitive services you have got, but just let us focus on computer vision here. So I have got a simple notebook here and I have got a piece of Python code and set of uh, codes to do uh, integration with cognitive services. So let me break this down into chunks. Whenever you want to integrate with any cognitive service on Azure, there are a few things that you have to keep in mind. The first one is you have to integrate it with a cognitive service resource. So in Azure that as you know, like uh, you have to create uh, resources if you want to use it. So in this case, if you want to link with cognitive services, you can have like each and every cognitive service, you can provision them individually or there are few cognitive services which Microsoft have bundled together. So when you provision a cognitive service resource itself, so there is a resource called cognitive service. When you provision that resource itself, it automatically is going to provision that for you. So let me quickly explain you what it means. And so here I have got um, a set of resources. So let me group them by type. Cool. So you can see I have got a cognitive services multi service account. So what this really means is when I provisioned this resource, which is cognitive services resource, 
I can use these cognitive services, the APIs that belong to these services with this single service that has been provisioned. So you can either go and say like, OK, I want to provision a service related to decision or language or speech. You can provide uh, like provision them individually. Or if you think like I have an application where I'm going to use all of these services together. In that case, you can create a cognitive services multi service account. So that's what I have got in here. And this is another example where I'm going to use text analytics in the later uh, demo, but there I am more specifically provisioned a text analytics service. So this service, if you provision it, then basically you can use it only for text analytics. But if I create a cognitive services multi service account, then I can use it for multiple APIs within cognitive services rather than creating them individually. So that is the fundamental difference. So I have got uh, the service provisioned already here for our demo and also a key vault. So as you know, like uh, always better to put the keys in uh, the key vault for safeguarding your secrets. But what did I really put in the key vault? Whenever you provision a cognitive services account, the two key things that you require to connect to that account is your key and your endpoint. So in basically what it tells uh, Azure is like, OK, when I'm making any API calls to cognitive services, it Azure needs to know which particular account it needs to build. And so the transaction counts or the API counts will be measured against this URL. So that's why this URL is important and the secret. Uh, the keys are basically like a secret which you can use in order to connect to this particular endpoint. So these are the two important things I would keep for me. My keys are really important and I will take a copy of these keys and store it in my key vault. And that is the purpose of the key vault. The key vault pretty much holds the key information in here. So I have got both the keys, one for my cognitive services uh, account and one for my text analytics uh, uh, account that I have provisioned. So the keys are placed in my key vault. So that's all ready. So we have got cognitive services created, service created, key vault has got the secrets. Of course, I have got a synapse analytics workspace. Without that, there is no point in talking about cognitive service integration with synapse analytics. So let us move on back to our notebook. So here, this is the URL I was talking about where we got this from the endpoint as I showed you on the service. And here I have got a piece of code which is actually talking to the uh, key vault in order to extract my secret value. So this is going to the cognitive service key will hold my secret value. So while I'm doing this, let me just get this started because uh, my spark pool takes a bit of time. So while that is running, I'll explain the rest of the code. So cognitive services APIs provides you like especially the computer vision API. It provides you different endpoints so I can analyze an image and I can identify like OK, what are the things that like what is the faces I can identify from the image, the tags I can identify from the image tags are nothing but objects. So when I show you the image, you will get to know what it is. And if your image is actually like uh, uh, has got some text in there, you can use the OCR capability or the endpoint to extract the text out of your image. And that's what this example is going to show us. And uh, the next one is if you have an image where you have a enlarged version of the image and you want to get a thumbnail version of the image, then you can generate thumbnails quite easily in here. And you may be thinking about uh, what is the advantage of integrating co computer vision cognitive service with the Azure Synapse Analytics? Think about if you are dealing uh, with um, 300 or 400 images on a daily basis and uh, what you need to do is for a website, you have to publish those images and when you are uh, publishing the images, you need to create a thumbnail version of that image. So if you put that uh, into this way, like you can automatically generate that thumbnail version of the image as part of your um, your typical uh, data integration process. So you don't need to wait until like saying, oh, OK, so we have to uh, get the images in there and then manually go and create the thumbnail images. You can automate that process quite easily. Tagging of an image. Uh, one of the key thing from an accessibility perspective is like a, uh, providing a description or the alternate text for an image. So the tagging comes uh, into play for that because you can just say like, OK, uh, you can describe the image as well as you can say like, OK, these are the objects that are associated with the image. So describe is more the alternate text in terms of like, OK, how do I uh, describe this image for an accessible disabled user? 
and if you want to just recognize any domain specific content, you can go here. So each of this when I'm talking about here, I will show it in the references page. I have got a link which talks about each and every endpoint within the computer vision API that will allow you to do that. So still my uh, pool is actually kickstarting, but while it is starting, one of the key thing that you need to execute this notebook is I need to have a Apache Spark pool created. So I have already got the pool created in here. So I have got a couple of pools here and you can provision how many ever you want and it will and I have enabled auto pause in there and that's the reason like I had to just run it to make sure like to warm it up a bit. Cool. So now this has run. So what I'm going to do is I will import some of the libraries that I require from a cognitive services point of view and I will assign retrieve my key and assign my service name. So this is going to now connect to Key Vault and integrate and get the secret for me. And the first thing I'm going to do is to uh, just have got a dog image and what it is going to do is go ahead and uh, find out the tags associated with that image. So it is still running. So once it comes, I should be able to showcase this to you. So when I talk about uh, the images, so I have got a set of images that I have already stored in there. So let me quickly get into. And I will show you the image in the meantime while this is running. So this is the simple dog image I have got and that's what I have passed it on to computer uh, vision to say like, OK, uh, get some information about this. And as you can see here, it has detected the image as a dog. And also like I'm just printing the tags here as you can see like it has identified it is a dog and sitting outside and it is a small dog and it is like a brown colored dog and stuff which correlates to the image I was showing here. So as you can see and this is what uh, computer vision is capable of doing. So this is for a simple uh, image like a dog, right? So the next one is I have got an image where I have got some text in there. So here I can just quickly show. The image here and this is what the image I have passed on and what I can. See here is this is going to provide me the information. So the key thing I am explaining here is like uh, you can just now extract this information and you can start looking at. So as you can see the text is closed. When one door closes. And then you can see the rest of the words in there. Open all you have to do to walk in. So as you can see here. The information is just available in here, so this is what uh, as a OC from a OCR perspective that you can do with the, just a computer vision, but this power is now you can get within Synapse Analytics when you integrate the computer vision cognitive service. And the other one is generate thumbnails. So if I just run this particular code, so this is going to take Satya Nadella's image, which I have got in an enlarged version, and it is going to generate a thumbnail version of that. So this is as simple as that, like uh, just uh, uh, you can generate the thumbnail and think about like if your data lake storage has got heaps of images, you can pretty much run this to convert them into or generate thumbnails out of that. I'll quickly show you the described image and the rest are self explanatory, so I'll just skip them for now and we'll jump onto our presentation slides. So here you can see the description. And this time I have changed the description to um, Satya Nadella, so it clearly identified. The good thing about computer vision is it can identify uh, celebrities. So it's not about just um, the uh, objects or something. So it can also identify celebrities. It can identify landmark uh, buildings and stuff. So and also like a famous. Um, OK, when I talked about celebrities and also brands. So if you have like a sport brands and things like it can automatically detect that from those images. So a lot of things that you can do once you start uh, looking at oh, OK, these are the things I can get so you can create a lot of business use cases that you can automate using computer vision. So with that note, I think you have got an idea around what computer vision is and why it is really important for us to talk in terms of integration with the Azure Synapse Analytics. So let us jump on to our slides here. So what is modern data warehouse? So we know a uh, normal data warehouse is bringing all the data together 
so that we can create some flash reports and dashboards. The problem we used to have historically is like either it will be a 24 hour old data that we are dealing with, but these days like uh, organizations are more agile and they want to they want real time data, so they are not going to wait for 24 hours to get to see like uh, how their revenue is looking and stuff because the competition is really huge. So that's where modern data warehouses are really important. And also one of the key uh, pain point we had with traditional data warehouses was the focus was more around structured data. So if you don't have a structured data, then probably there is no way of like uh, how do you store the data? How do you uh, bring the data as part of your analysis and so on? With modern data warehouse, it has been addressed. So whether you have structured, unstructured or semi-structured, still you can just bring them in the same fashion. And also like there are no upfront costs. When we talk about modern data warehouse, and especially if you're bringing in unstructured data, then uh, your infrastructure plays an important role. Where am I going to store the data? And especially if I want to uh, bring in advanced analytics capabilities, uh, your infrastructure plays an important role in there. And with the cloud, I think you don't have more of upfront costs. Yes, you have got your OPEX, which is your operational budget, but I think you don't need to worry about like, okay, I have got million dollars or more than million upfront to uh, just uh, put on the infrastructure wise. Less complex to configure. As you saw, like a lot of things, what we are doing is you jump onto the portal and you pretty much configure things. And especially like uh, because you don't have a lot of upfront costs, like you can easily prototype and scale it. So if a customer has got an idea and they want to, you want to execute that idea and come up with a solution, you can easily prototype them with the, the modern data warehouse. And of course, like uh, with the massively parallel processing, uh, cap tech, like a capability, like you can actually uh, create like a high performance data warehouses quite easily. And why we talk about modern data warehouses here? Because Azure Synapse Analytics is mainly uh, available for you and provided by Microsoft in order to create modern data warehouses. So how do you do uh, modern data warehousing with Azure? And I think Synapse Analytics plays an important role for that. And I think in the previous session, uh, you would have seen about uh, the Spark pools, the SQL pools that you can easily create with Synapse Analytics, the ability for Synapse Analytics to integrate with Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2, which you will be doing as part of provisioning Synapse itself. So what does the storage allows you to do? You can store uh, any unstructured data or semi-structured data quite easily in here, and you can just uh, uh, query them quite easily from Synapse Analytics. Of course, like uh, when it comes to uh, analytics and visualization, you need to have a visualization tool that will help you to view the data that you are storing and Power BI helps you to do that. And so if you look at as a typical um, data warehouse process, you start with ingesting the data, you need to store the data, you need to uh, prepare and train the data. This is especially if you are bringing in advanced analytics capabilities. And finally, like you have to visualize the output or the dashboards or the reports that you create. So this is a typical uh, modern data warehouse that we. These days we are dealing with. So Azure Synapse Analytics, it provides you that capability, so it's one stop shop like where you can do everything uh, that relates to modern data warehouse. Before Synapse Analytics, one of the things that we didn't have was like, a, yes, of course, we had Azure Data Factory, which can do uh, your ETL capability, provides you the cloud ETL capabilities. Yes, we had uh, Data Lake Storage Gen 2. We can use it for storage purposes. And of course, like uh, you have got um, notebooks that you can create and do machine learning capabilities quite easily. Power BI was almost all already there and you can do that. What we didn't have is a single unified interface where all these tools can be integrated. So when as someone comes as a, like I want to create an enterprise data warehouse, they have to they don't need to go around and figure out what do I use for ETL? What do I use for visualization and so on? Everything is available in the Azure Synapse Studio. So if you jump onto the Synapse Studio and which is what we saw in our demo, uh, you will be able to see like you can create uh, your integration pipelines in there. You can uh, integrate with Azure Purview. We saw like uh, your data catalog stuff. You can integrate with Power BI within that studio interface. So and you can do machine learning capabilities and AI ca infuse AI capabilities all within the studio environment. You don't need to get away from the studio at all, and that is the key advantage of using Azure Synapse Analytics. 
So we talked about modern data warehouse. We talked about like, okay, how Azure Synapse Analytics is helping organizations uh, to uh, realize uh, the value of modern data warehouse. But why AI is important in modern data warehouse? Where does this comes into play? So when we talk about modern data warehouse, uh, it's not about just collecting the data and just uh, storing the data and visualizing the data, which we can do with traditional data warehouses itself. Yes, of course, real time capability was not there, but still you will be able to get reports and dashboards out of that. But what it was missing was like, OK, the learnings that you can get out of your data. So that's where like uh, when you uh, infuse AI capabilities into that, then probably you can provide your organization users with that learnings. So how can I uh, take the data from the past and predict and use it to predict the future? And uh, which is really valuable for a lot of organizations, whether you're dealing with real time or you are dealing with the historical data. Uh, a classic thing which I noticed with one of my clients when I was working with is they were dealing with real world scenarios. So this is a trading platform. And what they have to look for is like, uh, OK, we want to know how the prices are changing. So every five minutes they have the prices will change and they have to react based on the price change. Whether is it a good opportunity for us to sell or is it a good opportunity for us to buy based on the pricing changes? But what uh, it was quite interesting to notice is like they are dealing with real time data, right? So they have got uh, seven days worth in the, of data in the past and seven days worth of data in the future because they had some predictions done already and then they update that with the real time pricing as it comes along. So but then they were also interested in historical uh, data. So they said like, OK, we need to have access to uh, last 10 years worth of data. And I was quite fascinated and thought like, OK, you are doing real time pricing, right? Why are you so interested in last 10 years uh, worth of data? Because do you have even time to look into those scenarios? And that's when like uh, uh, one of the th key thing they highlighted to me was like uh, uh, Anupama, like we may need that data because sometimes uh, everything goes fine day to day what happens and things we know. But when we hint hit into certain things like OK, whether it's an earthquake or a pandemic situation or something, sometimes we need that historical data to go back and refer to how a market was uh, reacted during that scenarios. So when an earthquake uh, hit like uh, OK, how how the market reacted for how many days? And that will be a good lesson for us to uh, take those learnings and apply that uh, uh, in the current scenario when we have one. And that was really important. That's when I understood like, OK, even when you're doing real time uh, or making decisions using real time data, the historical data, having an historical data in the background will be really valuable, not only for doing like a long term analytics or predicting the future, but giving them access to that data when they do real time analytics is also valuable. So that explains why uh, data like historical data is valuable. But if you can present that historical data in a more valuable like a, like get the value out of the data, don't just give them oh, OK, here you go like last 10 years worth of data, but then find uh, like some important metrics out of the data and present it to them. And that's where uh, the AI and machine learning capabilities will be really valuable when you start integrating them with your data warehouse. Cool. So what we are going to do next is like uh, we saw computer vision. Now you understood like why uh, modern data warehouses require AI capabilities and what we will be looking at is like uh, even though we talked about cognitive service machine learning things uh, in this session, we are focusing more around incorporating cognitive services capability. So let us get into uh, sentiment analysis. Then I will tell you like uh, where um, sentiment analysis is going to be valuable. So let me jump on back to my Synapse Analytics notebook. So here I have got an initial uh, notebook here where I am taking some comments that is coming from uh, an organization called Fabricam. So they have launched a product and they have got some comments that they have received. And what I have done is I have loaded the comments like it's a CSV file uh, which uh, has got all the comments and that has been uh, loaded into a Spark table. So then what I, you can easily do is like uh, one of the thing with the Synapse Analytics and in its integration with cognitive services is you can go and write a notebook and start doing it like how I showed you the computer vision one or you can just right click on a table like here. And then you can click on machine learning and you can say like I want to predict this particular table with a model. And as you can see there are uh, the pre trained models that are available in here. 
which is the anomaly detector and sentiment analysis. So I will call this like a wizard, so you don't need to do anything. It will automatically write the code for you. So if I say sentiment analysis and continue, just wait and watch. It will say like, OK, give me the cognitive services resource. So for sentiment analysis, I'm going to use my text analytics uh, API, which I have provisioned. And then it is asking me the column which I have got uh, the common column. I will be specifying that and because that's where I have got the feedback from the clients. So now I can click on open notebook. There you go. So it has written the piece of code that I require in order to just do the sentiment analysis. So I didn't do anything. It automatically wrote the code for me. The good thing about this is you can customize this code now once you have got for any other cognitive services if you want to use. OK, so you don't need to hand code everything. You just start with uh, the wizard is currently available only for these two, the anomaly detector and sentiment analysis. But once you get the notebook, you can customize this to use it for other uh, other cognitive services that if you need to. Cool, so now I have got this uh, piece of code here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just run this. So again, it will take a little bit of time to run this while this is running. And as I showed you, quite simple. You create a Spark table, right click on that, click on machine learning, and then do uh, click on the, it will show you a wizard for both anomaly detector or sentiment analysis. Choose sentiment analysis and it will say open a notebook. The notebook will have the code that you have to do. So then you have to just link it to uh, Apache Spark pool, and I have just left it to run for that to warm up a bit. Cool. So when we talk about uh, cognitive services in Azure Synapse Analytics, Microsoft have classified cognitive services into different set of categories. So you have got a speech category and you have a set of APIs available as part of speech, which is you can convert speech to text, text to speech, you can do translation of your speech into different languages and then you have got a speaker recognition. So with the help of the voice identification, you can easily identify who the speaker is with this API. Then you have the language category. So where you can uh, recognize entities, uh, you can do sentiment analysis, uh, question answering, which is pretty much handy, especially if you're dealing with uh, bots, uh, conversational language understanding. So. Uh, when I try to explain conversational language understanding, I normally tell to people like uh, uh, if I, I I use this classic coffee ordering example, because if I want to order a coffee, it's quite simple. I'll just say like I need a flat white with uh, two sugars and it's a regular size and it's a takeaway. So in simple, if I want to rephrase that and say like uh, give me a regular flat, uh, give me a takeaway regular flat white with two sugars as simple. I'm not going to ask the question to say what type of coffee you want. Do you want a regular or a, a large one and whether you want to have with sugar or without sugar? Conversational language understanding is the system should be able to understand the language the spe people are speaking and then it has to extract the parts that it require from that. And that's what language understanding is. In my case, like when I talked about like I need a regular flat white with two sugars, it should automatically figure out the sizes regular and uh, the coffee type is flat white and I need sugars and the quantity is two. Then comes your translator. Translator allows you to translate uh, like text into different languages that you require. When you come to uh, the vision category, we have got computer vision, custom vision and face API. So what does computer vision uh, does like we saw already in our first demo we gave a series of images we were able to convert to thumbnails we are able to extract uh, text out of the image we are able to identify like um, what are the tags associated with that image or basically tags are nothing but objects so those are the cool things that you can do with computer vision custom vision so a lot of people get confused with what's the difference between computer vision versus custom vision Computer vision is mainly models that is already pre-trained by Microsoft. OK, so a classic example is like I, I can give an image and the computer vision can detect whether the image has got a dog. OK, so if this is what I'm looking for in an image, but what it can't say is like a, what is the breed type of the dog? And that's where custom vision comes in. So if I want to say this in another way, like if I have a set of machinery in my organization, right? So I can just say like, OK, I have got a machine in there, but the computer vision can detect that. But what it can't detect is what type of machine is that? 
So for that, I have to train the different type of machines I have got in my organization. So I have to create a model for that. But again, this model is straightforward to create. You need to upload say, like a lot of images and tag them. And that's what custom vision allows you to do. So use computer vision for detecting generic objects. But if you are drilling down to specific object detection, then you have to go down the custom vision path. Then face API, as the name mentions, it is all about recognizing faces in images. So whether you have an image or whether you have a stream, a video stream, face rec uh, API can recognize faces uh, with the help of uh, the API itself. The last one uh, category is the decision, and you have got these APIs in there like anomaly detector, as the name uh, describes. If you find any anomalies in your data, which is really valuable when you do ETL processes, right? And especially like uh, if you see some odd uh, type of data, which is out of, totally out of range than what it used to be, you can easily detect and report it. May, really handy for handling data quality issues. Content moderator. Whether it's a video content or audio content doesn't matter, so you can identify whether uh, it has um, the right data, uh, like the right information in there or not, or otherwise you can alert it. One th thing where people use content moderator a lot is um, spam emails, right? So if you want to categorize uh, spam emails from your normal emails, content moderator is a cool thing to use even to uh, categorize that. And personalizer is if you want to tailor uh, users with uh, their own personalized experience, you can use the personalizer API in order to do that. So quite a, a set of APIs are available as part of the cognitive services stack, and you can easily uh, integrate with Azure Synapse Analytics in two ways. One is you can use the wizard, but as you saw, the wizard is available only for a couple of APIs, but then you have to extend the notebook, or you can use the Synapse machine learning capability, which is again to code uh, the information in a notebook and you can integrate with cognitive services. Either way, you can easily integrate them. Even if you are writing a Synapse ML code, it's not really hard, really straightforward in order to integrate with these APIs. Let us quickly check um, how is our sentiment analysis run has happened. Cool, there you go. So now I have got the text and I have received the sentiment for each and every comment. So from here on, I can categorize them and this is really handy, right? So when you are extracting the comments, you can uh, automatically uh, capture the sentiment and also like uh, you can feed it downstream from a visualization perspective saying uh, what, what they really need to see. So they don't need to worry about analyzing this many number of comments to look for what is we said the what is the total positive sentiment when they launch a product or something versus uh, is that a mixed response or are we getting totally negative sentiments out of that? So this is um, just using a wizard. You will be able to just integrate with uh, the sentiment analysis API or the cognitive service quite easily with your Synapse analytics here. So moving on further, so some of the prerequisites I mentioned to you when we saw the computer vision, just reiterating that. So if you want to integrate cognitive services with Synapse Analytics, first thing is you need to provision Azure Synapse Analytics workspace, and this will be provisioned by default with a ADLS Gen2 account, uh, so storage account, so that it will be really valuable. Followed by that, you need to have an Azure Cognitive Services resource. So this is uh, when I talk about Cognitive Services resource, keep that in mind. You can provision a Cognitive Service multi uh, resource type, which is like you can use any of the APIs I highlighted in the previous slide here. So if I use a multi resource type, I don't need to provision a separate resource for each and every API here. But if I want to, uh, to say like, OK, I don't want I, my service should be talking only to face API or my service need to talk only to computer vision API. If I have to be more specific, then I will be provisioning only that specific API service. Then of course, Azure Key Vault to store your secrets for your API and you have to link your Azure Cognitive Services with Azure Synapse Analytics. Let me quickly show you. I think that's the part which we missed. So this is my Synapse Analytics workspace and one of the thing I have got here is link services. So I have linked to my keyword because when you are trying to link your cognitive services, right? It will be saying like, where do I get the key from? So I have to link first. I have to create a key vault to link for that. So creating a link service is really straightforward. You click on new. So to create a key vault link service, you choose Azure Key Vault. 
So then you choose the subscription. So I want to have a managed identity. Then you choose the subscription you want to deal with and then it will show you what is the key wall name that is available. And you can also test the connection to see whether this is working or not. This is how you will go and create a new key wall link service. The next thing is cognitive service link service. So I will go new and I'll go and search for cognitive services as you can see here. And then continue. So whether it's a text analytic service or whether it is the multi resource cognitive service doesn't matter. You go ahead and choose the subscription. The cognitive service name. So here all my uh, cognitive services that I have provisioned is there. So these are the two ones I have used for today's demo. Cognitive services demo 15 and text analytics demo 15. If I choose this as you can see here, that's why I told you we have to provision the Azure Key Vault service first at the link service. So now it is saying where do I get the secret from? So here I can say use this and it will ask for what is the secret name? So because I'm using cognitive service, I will use the cognitive service key. And that's it. So this once you configure these things, this is going to create the link service, which pretty much we will be using in our notebooks. So if I jump back onto my notebook here, you can see here I have used my text analytics demo link service here. So pretty much the link service is already linked with the particular uh, API that I want to use and I can start using text analytics from there on. So that's uh, those are the key prerequisites I would say that you require before you can start integrating cognitive services with your Azure Synapse Analytics. The last one I want to quickly showcase is the forms recognizer because forms recognizer is one of the applied AI service. Initially it was there. Uh, one of the thing with Microsoft uh, have been doing is like uh, in the cognitive services stack has been there for years now. So they are always recategorizing things because as and when new APIs are coming, they are actually recategorizing saying, OK, this would be appropriate category now rather than the old category. So keep an eye on that because sometimes they may you may have the same APIs, but it may be categorized elsewhere. Forms recognizer is similar to that. So forms recognizer is you can extract data from forms and Microsoft now categorized it as part of the applied AI service. So they have created this new thing called applied AI service, which is nothing but uh, uh, you can use this to solve a business problem itself. So forms recognizer pretty much when you see the demo, you will know like straight away oh, where I can use it straight away immediately to solve a business problem. That's where with computer vision and all you need to think about. OK, I know this is what the service does, but I need to find out the use case. How do I integrate to that? So applied AI services straight away out of the box a solution for a problem uh, where other cognitive services that you're seeing is like you need to figure a way how you can use uh, those services to solve a problem that you have got. Cool, let me quickly jump back to my Synapse Analytics for this final demo. So I have got a forms recognizer thing. So again, uh, I don't have a notebook for this. Uh, sorry, I have I don't have a wizard for this, so I have to hand code as uh, the API endpoints in here. So same thing, I have got uh, my cognitive services uh, link in here. And I have got the so this is the I'm using the multi resource multi resource supports my uh, forms recognizer, so I don't need to provision it separately. So what I have got is a, a series of um, invoices and things and uh, receipts that I want to scan. So what? Cognitive services forms recognizer allows you to do is you can it can analyze a layout. So if you have a table with a list of um, an invoice or something, I'll show you a quick image that will showcase. So if I have an invoice like this, right? So it can analyze the layout and it can extract the image like text out of this particular invoice layout. And that's what this layout um, analyze layout is going to do for us. So let me. OK, so my capacity has increased. Let me try whether this one is. OK, while that is running. So the cool thing is that's the layout part and then analyze receipts will help us to analyze the receipts. So receipts are nothing but um, I can show you a quick simple receipt here. So if you have a piece of receipt here, you want to extract the text out of that. We can quite easily do that with the forms recognizer. So you can quickly understand, right? Like uh, uh, what is the um, key thing? OK, I think this is keep failing. One second, I'll just get that sorted in the meantime. 
The other one is the driver's license. So if you have a driver's license, then probably you can also use that to utilize the information that you can extract the text out of the driver's license. So key point here is like a use. Uh, these things can be used in terms of like extracting information out of that. So I think I may need to pause uh, the thing here. Just bear with me for a sec. OK, so while we are doing that and I think I don't I don't mind uh, any questions that are coming through or people have got any questions that they want to talk about. I'm happy to just uh, take it up. OK, if there are not much questions coming through, then probably I'll just uh, continue. Yeah, with some so of no, the references. no questions right now, so just keep no going. Issues. Yeah, I'll keep going. So with the forms recognizer, as I said, whether you have got um, a business card or whether you have got a driver's license or whether you have got a receipt or whether you have got an invoice, pretty much uh, the forms recognizer can extract the information and store it. And this is really valuable, especially think about like uh, if you are in the finance space and if you have volumes of invoices coming to your organization, then pretty much you can integrate your Forms recognizer cognitive service as part of your ETL process, extract all the data, plug it in into your downstream uh, financial application system. And what they have to do is like uh, where there is a mismatch or something or the accuracy level is low, they have, that's when they have to review it. So you can pretty much automate uh, the, like what do you say, the invoice process itself quite easily by integrating with the forms recognizer. So the key point here is around all these cognitive services that I have been showcasing, like you can easily integrate them with the Azure Synapse Analytics. And how do you go about doing that is the list of resources I have provided in here. So you can just use them to get started with, OK, how do I go about and linking Azure Cognitive Services with Synapse Analytics? You can easily go ahead and follow these links and you can get started. So there is, uh, as I said, there is a lot of things that you can uh, do with the Synapse Analytics and with its cognitive services integration. So I would definitely recommend you to just start working on that and start using the, realize the advantage of that. So just a final note, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me now, but uh, if you don't have any questions, I'm always available online. So feel free to reach out to me with any of your questions. Hope I have just given you a good uh, quick introduction around what uh, Azure Synapse Analytics is and why uh, cognitive services or a integrating AI capabilities with Synapse is going to be valuable. And if you have any other questions related to that or if you're trying to do um, proof of concept or something and if you're getting stuck with this, how to do that, feel free to reach out to me and my contact details are here and I'll also share my slides post this session.